Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Simulation of Nonlinear Effect of Ceramic Capacitors. Now, ceramic capacitors are very popular because uh, you can get uh, high capacitance values in small packages, and they are based on some dielectric material, ceramic dielectric material uh, of different kinds. And here are some of these, COG, uh, X7R, Y5V. And the difference between them is the dielectric constant and the de temperature dependence. And among other things, the dependence of the capacitance on the voltage across the capacitor. Now, some capacitors or some materials, some dielectric materials, are pretty stable as far as the voltage uh, dependence, like COG, but some, like Y5V, this is just an example, there are many others, are highly dependent on the voltage across them. So if you start with a certain value, then as the voltage goes up, this is a 50 volt capacitor, and as you reach the maximum value allowable, the capacitance drops by 80% percent. This is by 80 percent, that is you'll get only 20 percent of the initial value, which is very high. Now here is an example of a capacitor that we have actually tested, we have measured it. This is a 63 volt capacitor. It is supposed to be a one microfarad capacitor, but we have found that the initial value is only 0.42 microfarad that's 4.2 10 to the minus 7, and it drops extremely fast as the voltage on it increases. You see in 5 volts, it only drops to 1.5 10 to the minus 7. And then as we go, this is a 63 volt capacitor, so as we go to, say, 50 volt, uh, it's really becoming a flow capacitor. So it's a very large voltage dependent. Now, these are the actually uh, measurement points, uh, 0 volt, 4.2, this is times 0.1 microfarad, uh, 5 volt, 1.7, etc. So these are the uh, breakpoints here. We haven't bothered to fit it to a nice, uh, say, a polynomial uh, curve. This is just the raw data here and a straight line between them. So what's the effect of a voltage dependence uh, capacitor uh, in power electronic circuits. Well, first of all, uh, it will of course increase the ripple uh, because many times you use the capacitor for filtering and if the capacitance is dropping then the ripple will be increased. Uh, the system may become in unstable because the loop gain is changing and um, in some cases if you are close to instability you may have a problem. You can get distortion and there are some other uh, effect that you might expect. Now the objective of this presentation is first of all to explain how to build a SPICE model of voltage dependent capacitor in a very simple and an intuitive way and then to demonstrate with this uh, model some of the uh, behavior of a voltage dependent capacitor uh, by simulation. So let's go first of all to the first question of how to build a SPICE, in this case implemented in P-SPICE uh, simulation model of a voltage dependent capacitor. Now the state space equation of a capacitor is written here. Current is capacitance times dvdt, that is the derivative of the voltage. Okay? In our case, this capacitance is voltage dependent. That is, it depends on the voltage across the capacitor. So what we do, we start with a current source. This is a current source. G value is a current source. It has two inputs that uh, you can make the output a function of them, but you don't have to. You, you can just write an expression. That's what we do. Uh, I'm just shorting these two inputs. I'd like to work with the uh, G value and E uh, value, etc. So uh, these are of no consequence, uh, just the expression is describing the behavior of this uh, source. Okay, so this is a current source, a current source here, which is defined first of all as the derivative, DDT is time derivative 
of the voltage of C3, voltage of C3. Now, uh, in the actual circuit that I'm going to show, this is going to be ground. Strictly speaking, this should have been C3 minus the voltage here, that is, the derivative is the voltage across the capacitor. I'm assuming here that this is ground, so this is why it's only C3, okay? So this is the part of the derivative. Then we have a constant. This is going to be a scaling factor that I'm going to put in a, a parameter table. And here then, I have the voltage of CB, which is actually the value of the capacitance, okay? I'm generating this value here by a table. This is E table is a table. The table has an input. This is the input to the table. Like what is affecting the output. And this is the absolute value of C3, the voltage of C3, again, assuming this is ground. So this is going to be a function of the voltage across the capacitor, absolute, because uh, the capacitance is changing for positive and negative voltage the same, okay? And then I've put into the table, the actually measurement points, okay? These are the measure points. And again, I'll have this scaling factor uh, to multiply this. Uh, actually, the capacitor we have tested should be multiplied by 0.1. For simplicity, I'm going to use one microfarad, just make it round number. So this is going to be one microfarad. So the first value at zero volt will be 4.2 microfarad times this, this microfarad. Then it'll be 1.7 microfarad at five volt. At 10 volt will be 1.1 microfarad, etc. So this is the heart of the model. This is the model of a voltage-dependent capacitor. Now I'm going to test it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to reconstruct the graph from which I have taken these numbers or that I based on these numbers. This is the graph that I've shown you before. I'm going back. I'm going to reconstruct this by the model and to see if I'm getting the same thing, okay? To do this, I have to expose the capacitor, first of all, to a variable voltage, DC voltage. I'm doing it by having here a uh, generator, which is a sinusoidal source, with an offset, which is the bias. The bias is here, uh, now defined as 50 volt. I'm going to switch this voltage, okay? So I'm going to change it in steps. The amplitude of this generator is one volt, and frequency is 100 kilohertz. This is just arbitrary. Now I've put here an inductor and resistor. This is going to be used later on for other purposes. So in this case, I'm just uh, making this inductor one pico Henry, which is just a piece of wire. R is just one ohm just arbitrarily, and this is now the capacitor. Again, it's going to be a capacitor which is changing, or supposed to change, and the values are at zero volt, to be 4.2 microfarad. This is the coefficient here. This is one microfarad, this is 4.2, and then it'll go down and down, okay? So we have an AC excitation, we have an offset, we have a variable capacitor and just a resistor in series. Now I'm setting the running time to 5 milliseconds, uh, collecting data after 4.5 milliseconds. Very important to limit the maximum step size. This is very, very important. Otherwise, you might have a convergent problem. Actually, it will be better to, to have it one nanosecond, but uh, it will take, of course, 10 times longer uh, to run. So this is the basic uh, setting. And then I'm going to a parametric sweep. I'm going to, to sweep on this bias voltage between zero and 50 volt with steps of five volts. So as to get the value uh, of the voltage and current uh, at various bias voltage. So here is what I'm getting. This is the capacitor voltage. You see the bias steps and we see the AC component uh, superimposed on it. 
This is the current, actually measured through this inductor, zero inductor, one Pico Henry inductor. Uh, we see the current, and the current, of course, is changing because as the capacitor is changing due to the bias, the current uh, will decrease, as a matter of fact, as the bias is increasing because the capacitance is getting to be smaller. Okay, so this is the collection of all the points. So now I'm going to the performance analysis option. There is a button at the upper part of the window of the probe, and it will open this scale. Now I'll choose uh, traces like this, choose the maximum value of the maximum value of the inductor current. This will be the peak value of the inductor current. I'll just work with peak values. And then the maximum value, the peak value of the capacitor voltage, this is the capacitor voltage here, C3. But since this capacitor voltage includes a DC component because of the bias, and I want only the AC component, I'm going to subtract the DC component. To do this, I have actually put here a source, the value of which is the bias. So, if the bias is changing, this source is changing. And at each point, I can subtract this bias value from the total capacitance value in order to get the AC component. And then, I am multiplying this denominator with this factor because capacitance is the current times voltage times omega. And this is 2 pi f, f is 100 kilohertz. Um, and so this is uh, this value here, this is this constant, this is omega. Okay? And as I do this, and here it is what I'm getting. This is the result of the simulation. And as you can see, it's uh, exactly uh, the shape and values of the uh, measured uh, capacitance. Uh, no wonder, it just shows that we haven't made any mistakes, okay? So we have reconstructed the same measurement by the model we have. So we are confident that this is a pretty good model of this variable capacitor. So let's have a look at some uh, behavior of this uh, capacitor. I'm starting with a step response and I'll compare the step response of this variable capacitor to a step response of a fixed capacitor. Assuming just 4.2 microfarad capacitor, fixed value, as uh, compared to this one, which starts with 4.2 microfarad, but then, of course, it's changing as the voltage will change. I'm generating here a pulse by a square wave generator uh, with 40 volt uh, amplitude, uh, rise time of 0.1 microsecond. Um, the pulse width one second and a period of two seconds are really of no importance because I'm going to look only at the very beginning of this pulse. Uh, again, no inductance in fact, this is one Pico Henry and the resistance is still one, the resistor is still one ohm, okay? And of course it's the same thing here, same thing here. And we are comparing the voltage across the nonlinear capacitor with the voltage across the linear capacitor. And here it is. The red one is the linear capacitor. This is a very nice exponential curve, as you'd expect, depending on the RC values. And here is the nonlinear behavior of the voltage-dependent capacitor. It starts at the very beginning the same, but then very quickly it's uh, has a steeper uh, rise time, and the reason is the capacitance goes down, so it's charging quicker, and there's a big difference in the timing here. So if you're using this capacitor for timing or delay, or some other application that depends on the uh, RC circuit, then watch it uh, as the voltage is changing, the capacitance is changing, and the timing uh, could change dramatically. Now, let's have a look at a, another example. This is now a resonant circuit. I'm going to increase the inductor. It is now 100 microhenry. Uh, I'm reducing the value of the resistor 
so it's 10 milliohm. It's going to be like a, a resonant circuit with a fairly high Q. This, in fact, could represent a buck converter without a load. There's no load here. It's just the inductor and the capacitor. There's a filter capacitor and the input inductor. And of course, I'm uh, just for demonstration, I am exposing it to this uh, 40 volt step. In reality, of course, uh, one would use the soft start and the, the pulses will not be uh, that uh, sharp, but still, just for demonstration, let's assume we have a step of 40 volt and uh, see what really happens when it is indeed a resonant circuit in effect. So here is what we are getting. Well, there are two uh, features here that I like to uh, elaborate on. One is, of course, that the frequency of the fixed capacitor, resonant frequency, is lower because the capacitor is uh, <clears throat> of a larger size overall. The frequency of the voltage-dependent capacitor is higher because the ca average capacitance is lower. and what is very important is the fact that the voltage of the peak voltage of the case of the variable or voltage dependent capacitor is much higher. Now, when you expose a circuit, let me go back for a second. If when you expose a capacitor or here, capacitor to a pulse through an inductor, the maximum value of this uh, point that is across the capacitor would be twice the input voltage, twice the height of the pulse. This is from basic ele electrical circuit theory. Okay, this is for the linear capacitor. Now, in case of this nonlinear capacitor, we see that this is much higher. In the case of linear capacitor, it is. Uh, in fact, it is 80 volts exactly because the Q is low and so the uh, losses are low. This is from the very beginning, so the first pulse. Uh, it's going to be decayed later on. So here it's, it's well, it's like the theory, but here we see for the nonlinear capacitor that it's 125, okay, much, much higher. And this should be taken into account that uh, you might get high voltages. In fact, uh, there is an application of generating high voltage pulses uh, by using a uh, voltage-dependent capacitor. Okay, this is the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you found it interesting and it might be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.